Now, COVID has been a catalyst for many folks to make life changes, some bigger than others, like picking up and moving far away. We've all thought about it, leaving it all behind for a simpler way of life. But when it comes down to it, who among us could actually do it? Well, my following guests have. The push from the pandemic was all they needed. Please welcome Chris Chow, Maurice and Agnes Dalupang, and Kevin Forrestal. So good to have you with us. I'm going to start with you, Chris. Nicaragua. Tell me everything. Why Nicaragua? And are you ever coming back? <laughs> Yeah, so Nicaragua is a very beautiful country. Both my partner and I have had the opportunity to visit here before. So when the pandemic hit, we were definitely looking for a different pace of life. And this community that we live in is COVID free. So it's pretty chill. We have a connection here, so that makes it a lot easier. And definitely this backdrop makes it hard to think about going back home. It, it's almost unreal. It's like you're superimposed, like there's something completely fake behind you. Uh, it's amazing and COVID-free. I wonder how that feels. Maurice and Agnes, welcome to you. Now, you all are still living in Canada. In fact, you are in one of my favorite places to visit, Prince Edward County. And I hear you plan to open uh, bed and breakfast, which would be cool. Was this always a dream of yours? Uh, we always thought about it, especially before having kids. We thought we'll retire somewhere hot, uh, open up a bed, bed and breakfast. But with the pandemic and having three kids, um, it's... We thought you know. PC was uh, more attainable. And we always loved the county. The county is amazing. Like, it's incredible. It's a beautiful, I find, vacation spot that is so very close to Toronto. And I think it's incredible that you've made it your life now. It's like your life's a vacation. Um, hello to Kevin, all the way on the East Coast in New Brunswick. A birdie told me you're living in your childhood home with your parents, which I know some people will be like, what? I find that pretty cool. How, how is it working for you? You know what? It's actually not as bad as some might think. <laughs> I'm pretty lucky to come from a large extended family out here in New Brunswick. So I, I'm surrounded by them as well as a ton of close friends. Uh, so, and, and actually the restrictions out here have been uh, a little bit lighter than they have in Ontario. So it's been great to spend time with all of them. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really wonderful. Oh, that sounds amazing. Over to Chris now. Uh, what pushed you to actually make the decision to move? Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. But you actually did it. You both actually did it. So why? So we thought to ourselves when the second announcement of lockdowns came, what can we do to make this um, more a more livable life? And with the high rent in downtown Toronto, I was also starting a new business. I'm now an empowered entrepreneur coach. And this gave us flexibility and a lower cost of life. So we really had, there was really no question, to be honest. <laughs> now, how different is your life now? Can you describe what a typical day is in Nicaragua right now for you? We, we wake up to the sounds of howler monkeys and we either have our coffee on the walk on the beach or do yoga by the pool. We have a lot of flexibility in our work because it's online. So we may be touring around on our motorcycle, doing some errands. We might be having sunset drinks on the beach with our friends. Restaurants here are all outdoors, so we can definitely enjoy outdoor dining. And even my boyfriend, Matt, he is a musician and he's been able to perform at some of the beach bars. So it's pretty, pretty idyllic for sure. It actually, it's totally sounds like it sucks. I wouldn't like that at all. <laughs> I mean, sunset drinks on the beach. That's amazing. Okay, now, Maurice and Agnes, uh, you both not only moved yourself, but you mentioned your three kids. So what was that aha moment for you that just pushed you to, to jump and make the move? So we thought, you know, the pandemic has really made us reconsider our future and the growing family. And we just woke up one day and we're like, if not now, when? So uh, we just put our house on the market. And, uh, you know, and uh, we thought, okay, let's find something in PEC. And uh, it ha everything happened so fast. Uh, we had barely any time to look back. And we don't regret any of it. Now, is the goal, though, for, for you both and your, for your entire family to come back when the pandemic's over? Because at some point, it's got to wrap itself up. So are you going to come back or is the plan no, to stay there? I mean, I mean, I mean, our intention is really for the, to, to grow our family here with a lot of space and um, and, um, um, and and start our own business uh, to supplement our income, essentially. Um, you know, should another pandemic occur uh, and if I ever lose my job, you know, we're, we have some kind of source of income. 
Please never worry about the kids coming in. They're like the best. They're scene stealers every time. We have no problem with them being part of this. Hello, sweet bunny. Good to see you. Kevin, uh, back to you now. I want to know, was it a culture, a bit of a culture shock going back to a small town from Toronto, big city? Yeah, definitely. I, I moved to Toronto pretty much immediately after high school and kind of took for granted the environment that I immersed myself in. So coming back to a small town, the reality of that, the realities of that have been a big, uh, a big culture shock. You know, out east, there's not uh, as big a queer population. There's not as big a racially diverse population. And I didn't realize how much living in an environment that has a lot of both of those things would. Um, would it have an effect on me? And then removing myself, of course, yeah, the culture shock's definitely there. Are you planning to come back? Like, are you thinking after this is all done, you're going to come back? Or is this, this is the new reality? You know, I still toss those ideas around every day. The quality of life here is so much more accessible and affordable than it is in Toronto. A couple of years ago, I was working as an actor in theater and restaurants. So, you know, it, I had to be in Toronto. Whereas now with a career in, in tech, the, there's a lot more opportunity. And so I'm kind of keeping all of my options open for as long as I can until I really need to make a choice and do something. Yeah, and I think that's lovely. And I think what a lot of people are sort of thinking about right now is that life is too short to be making decisions that don't feel good right now. It makes sense to go and, and if it's better during the pandemic to have space for your family or to be in your childhood home or to be on a beach, you should do it. Over to uh, Maurice and Agnes uh, for a moment. I just want to ask you about the difference between the city life and the country life. Have you seen a big difference? And for you, have you had any challenges integrating into your new hood? Well, it, well it's changed at first. Me, myself, as a visible minority, every time I walk into a store, you know, I, I have these looks. Is he here visiting from the city bringing COVID? Yeah. Uh, however, <laughs> um, you know, our neighbors who has gotten to know that we moved our family here to raise our children has really welcomed us with open arms, super friendly, and has gone out of their way to extend any assistance should we ever require any. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a great welcoming community so far. It sounds like it. And uh, Chris, I want to go over to you just to, to wrap this up. Are you staying there? Because it sounds like you should stay there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's definitely been something we've been discussing. I think, you know, with the quarantine hotel um, uh, uh, standards right now, we definitely are avoiding that. We've extended our stay a lot longer and we are considering some more permanent options. I think the idea, like I said, is that we want to be snowbirds. That was always a goal of our um, ourselves. So if we can set up a life where we have summers in Toronto and we all know that's the best in the time that the city is lively and then come here for the rest of the time, I think that would be really great. The absolute best of all the worlds. Thank you all for sharing. I love your stories. I think they're so inspiring. I still don't have the guts to do it. <laughs>